it's 12 o'clock.
Yep. Yep. It's still in the background. This is your hour with God. This is your moment. 
Come on. Cleanse out of your heart everything that is not like God. Cleanse out of your heart everything that keeps you distracted in the name of Jesus. So here it is. Come on. 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 Even if you're in your home, wherever you are, your room, your bedroom, your living room, I don't care if you're outside, wherever you are, I want you to lift your hand. I want you to lift one hand with the Lord this morning and just give him some worship. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. He's worthy. Worthy of praise. Worthy of honor. Worthy of glory. Yeah. Yeah. wherever you are to lift up your voice and come on let's sing with us come on be over Listen, we're trying out something new, a new program, so I can't see you. If you're clapping or putting in comments and all those wonderful things, I can't see you. But I believe that you are following along with us on this morning. So we had our worship. Now let's get a little bit of praise going on here. All right, wherever you are, I want you to begin to clap your hands and give God glory as we get into some worship on this morning. Come on, clap those hands. Give God glory. Come on, let this get into your spirit. Fill the whole house with praise on this morning. Come on. Oh, 
joining us consistently if you are joining us consistently then again thank you for tuning in again 
So here's what I'd like to do for those who are joining us on this morning, this afternoon. Um, I want to welcome you the way that we welcome everyone here to a place to heal Christian ministries. Uh, and so, it's not working. And so, here is a place to heal's welcome. A place to heal focuses on healing damaged hearts, minds, souls, and spirits by building self-efficacy through biblical teaching and practical principles. Whether you're damaged from relationships, friendships, self-degradation, mental instability, or even prior church pain, this is the place for you to be repaired, rebuilt, and restored. So that when you become strong, you help make someone else strong. No one here is perfect, and we will not perpetuate a self-righteous, perfect perception of ourselves. But we'll, in fact, point you to our Savior, who is perfect in, a in nature, but uses imperfect people to show how much he truly loves us. This place is open to everyone and respects diversity, but is strong in the convictions that change is possible. It takes a willing person in their heart to want to change, and therefore the decision is made by the person. We will not force anything on you, on individuals, but we will strongly suggest and encourage ways for you to change for the better. We believe in come as you are, but will help and teach and guide you on how to leave different. It is our mission to help you, whether it's in your return back to or in maintaining a healthy, fulfilled you. We offer biblical teaching through the word of God, but also counseling, group sessions, and resources to help you reach your fullest potential. You can do this. We are here to help. Healing is possible. Welcome to a place to heal. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope that you feel welcome there in Jesus' name. So to all of those who are joining us uh, for the first time, second time, third time, whatever, thank you so much for tuning in uh, with us once again in Jesus' name. On today, I believe that God's word will encourage us. Um, it is definitely going to make us stronger and build us up. Um, but I do believe that God gave me this word on this week for somebody that is going to be watching today. So here's what I would like for you to do. Uh, go to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, and we're going to read uh, a little bit. Um, uh, we will get to our key verses momentarily, um, but here's what I'm going to do. Uh, Marquise, if you could um, play the um, play the song from William Murphy, um, the anthem again, just for a second. All right, as you are turning to Jeremiah chapter 29, uh, we're going to begin at verse 1. All right, um, so as you are turning there... Um, I'm going to have us prepare, get our hearts and our minds ready for the word of God in Jesus' name. Um, Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. I want us to worship God for just a moment. We and again, about one I want to say this to those who seven. continue to support the ministry of A Place to Heal. Thank you so much. Uh, there are so many things that uh, I believe that God is calling us to do um, in Las Vegas, in our community. And so please continue to give. Um, thank you so much for those that continue to give, continue to bless the ministry. Uh, Malachi says that we are to give our tithes, bring our tithes to the storehouse so that there may be meat. That word meat there also means resources. Um, in the house so we're able to bless the people um, that are here in the, in the city of Las Vegas. I know it's called Sin City and I know what happens here stays here but I said it a while ago and I'll say it again. I believe that God can do something great in what is considered Sin City. If you don't believe it then listen uh, read your Bible okay? uh, because God sent Jonah to Nineveh, which was full of sin, and he changed that city around. So I believe that God can do the same thing here. All right. So as you prepare, come on, let's get into a mindset. Let's get into a heart set for the word of God in Jesus' name. And as you get there, let this song minister to you on this morning, on this afternoon. 
Let this song minister to you. Come on. Yeah. Come on, let this song get into your spirit on this afternoon. With so much going on in the world, I can I can tell you this that God is still sitting on the throne. He is still sitting on the throne. He has not lost yet. He is the ultimate winner. Come on, just for just for about 30 seconds, I want you to let this get into your spirit. Come on. your word and I ask that you would now be glorified in this moment in the name of Jesus. Cleanse now the heart and the mind so that we are able to hear from you. You be glorified. Let the kingdom be edified. Let somebody watching this on today be strengthened through the word. Father, you get all the glory. Take it because it belongs to you. I am nothing more than your servant. So speak through me Use me until you have used me up. I thank you for this moment. Cover me in the blood so that the enemy may not have anything to bring before you. May you be glorified once again. Now may the words of my heart and the meditation of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, the one who gives us access to your throne room, we say amen. Jeremiah chapter 29, beginning at verse number 1. Here's what he says. Now these are the words of the, of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive and to the priests and to the prophets and the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Je uh, Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem by the hand of Elisha, the son of Shaphan. And Jer uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, the, the king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel unto, uh, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Don't miss what he says. Who, who I, whom I caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build you houses, build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take wives, and beget sons and daughters, Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters. 
that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall you have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to the dreams which, which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word to you in causing you to return to this place. For I know, here's where we get hung up, and I don't want to stay there. Here's, where he, here's what the Lord says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all nations and from the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. We're going to stop there on this afternoon. Here's what the Lord gave to me to talk to us on today. Simply this, making the best of a bad situation. Making the best of a bad situation. Um, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, we put this hashtag, so we're going to use this for today. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, make the best of it. Come on, look at somebody in your house, in your living room, wherever they are, yell it to them and say, we're going to make the best of it. Old saying says, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. When life gives you rain, play in the puddle. Here's my saying, when life weighs you down, learn how to body build. These sayings and others encourage us when we have to make the best of a bad situation. It is evident that we continue to look at the world and the current state that we are in that looks like a bad situation. And most often when we see a bad situation, we often retreat and run in order to keep from fighting what seems like a losing battle. As a matter of fact, children of God, those who are watching, as a matter of fact, we steer clear of any situation that even resembles what looks like a bad situation. But I've come this Sunday to encourage you that while it may look like a bad situation, that looks can be deceiving. And there is no need for you to retreat or to run because we can make the best of a bad situation. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are moseying through, as we are moving through this uncanny, crazy year that we call 2020, it is evident that we are in a bad situation. It would seem like every single day, as we have said consistently, that every single day it seems to be something new, something different something more detrimental today than there was yesterday. And a lot of times, children of God, we are discouraged to continue because we don't know if tomorrow will be worse than today. As a matter of fact, there are people who don't even want to get up out the bed tomorrow because it already seems like today has, be, has been a day worth not moving through. And many a times, children of God, we have a, 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 a tendency to want to have the best of things without understanding that the best of things come with the worst of things as well. 
As the old saying goes, if it's not one thing, it's another. And more often than not, I know somebody has been dealing or fighting with the notion just this week that if it's not one thing, it's another. It seemed like the week was going to start off well. It seemed like uh, things were going to change. It seems like the week was going to progress the way that I needed it to. And just when I got my hopes up, it seems like the bad situation came out of nowhere. For somebody, you started off the week with joy. For somebody, you started off the week happy. For somebody, you started off the week believing that the end of the week would be greater than the beginning of the week. And it would seem like on Wednesday, an argument came out of nowhere. It would seem like on Wednesday, somebody got some bad news that they were not contemplating. It would seem as if somebody got news that somebody was in the hospital, that another a family member had been called home that 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 your job was cutting your hours that you couldn't understand what was going on you've been trying to help your child with their homework and it doesn't seem to be getting easier and just when you thought on Monday that the week was going to be good Wednesday came and knocked the wind out of you but can I tell somebody that even in the midst of the wind being knocked out of you can I tell you to breathe again can I tell somebody that your week uh, uh, has come to a climax on today and the word of the Lord on today is that you can make the best out of a, a bad situation. I'm talking to somebody that has been having bad situations uh, for the last two, three, four, five months. I'm talking to somebody who's had bad situations for the last uh, year or two or three or four and you've been saying, Lord, when is it going to be my break? When am I going to come out of this thing? When is this thing going to let up? When am I going to see the fruit of my labor? When am I going to come out of this depression? When am I going to come out of this slump? When am I going to get my joy back? When is somebody going to love me? And I came to tell you that even in the midst of your bad situation that God can still make this thing work out for you. Is there anybody that believes that even in the midst of this bad situation that God can turn it around for your good? I know it doesn't look good. I know it doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't taste good. But can I tell you that God is working this thing out even in the midst of this 2020 bad situation. Am I talking to anybody on this afternoon? And so God in this text on today is giving us encouragement even in the midst of captivity. Marquis, can you put that charge on there? God has given us encouragement even in the midst of captivity because here it is. Let me give you some context to the scripture that we are in on today. You have to understand that Jeremiah was a prophet and his prophecy, his, his call to God was solely to God himself. Can I give you some background? Uh, Jeremiah in this in this book on today is our prophet. He is our author. He is our leader. He is the one that is giving us some kind of leadership on today. I heard a preacher, well-respected, well-renowned, world-renowned uh, intellectual preacher say that you need to understand that this text, this book, calls Jeremiah before Jeremiah could even know who he was. As a matter of fact, preacher says that in order to understand who Jeremiah was, you have to understand who God called Jeremiah to be. See, uh, you need to understand that uh, in, in all of what is going on, that you cannot get away from what God is calling you to do. You cannot stray away from what God has for you to do. I know you're saying, Lord, I don't want to do that because I uh, I'm not the one to speak to them. I'm not the one to change the world. I'm not the one to make it happen. But just like Jeremiah, uh, God says to Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew you. I ordained you. I sanctified you. Uh, God is saying that to somebody else. I don't care if you're 30 or 40 or 50 years old. God is saying that I have already called you before you were even born. Before you even got into your mother's womb, I knew what I wanted to do with you. Before you even made that mistake, I already knew that it was going to happen. I already gave grace to it. And you cannot get away from what God is calling you to do. And so Jeremiah 
Jeremiah often called the weeping prophet because he wept sorely, wept a lot because he just did not understand how these things could happen. And so here in the book of Jeremiah, we find Israel in what is called the cycle of sin. For those that don't know what the cycle of sin is, uh, the cycle of sin is simply uh, when, the, the, when the children of Israel would begin well. They would start well. They would they would be in the will of the Lord. They would they would they would live up to what God wanted them to do. They would they would be in God's mandate. They would obey His laws and His decrees as, as they were taught in the Torah in the Pentateuch by Moses. They would do His will. God would call them to do something, and they would do just what we did, and that is have do what God had called them to do. He would tell them to go into a land, destroy everything, don't keep nothing and somebody would go in and they would begin to pillage and save stuff when God said to destroy everything. Can I give you a side note right quick? Whatever God tells you to do, do it fully. Don't half do it. Don't do a portion of it, but do it all because it is only in your full obedience that you will see God give you his full blessing. God does not bless the half God does not bless your third. God does not bless your quarter. But he only blesses your full attempt to be able to do this. And so God is saying to us through Jeremiah that the children of Israel have fallen into a place of sin once again. And isn't that just like where we are right now? Uh, you may not agree with this, but I believe that America, that the nation, that the world has fallen into a cycle of sin yet again. Uh, see, 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 it is often when we believe, uh, here it is, thank you Holy Spirit, it is often when we believe that we are in the, in the will of God that we are far from the will of God. Say that again. You may not agree with that. I messed up somebody's theology right quick. Uh, uh, because what happens is when you think that you are doing everything right, there is something that you are doing wrong. And when we are doing something wrong, that means that we are not in the will of the Lord. And so here it is. America, I mean Israel, is in their cycle of sin yet again. And so... God is speaking to America. God is speaking to Israel through the prophet, through the prophets and saying, listen, the only way for me to get you where I need you to be is to put you in a place where you have no other resource and no other way to get out of it but to look to me. And God has done that over these last couple of months. God has pulled us back in. God has pulled us down off of our high horses. God has brought us in to let us know that while you think that you have everything right, while you think that you are in my will, while you think that you are doing what I have called you to do, the only way for me to get your attention is for me to pull you down. It is evident the current state that is caused by us giving, getting beside ourselves the world thought it was running God. The church became about who's already in instead of who has to be in yet or who has yet to hear. We stopped seeking his rhema and relied on our talents and our gifts. And God decided to allow us to be shut down and shut in to refocus on him and them. Yes, Yes, the them, the them, they, they need us. The them that we collect tithes and offering from. The them that get dressed physically but are naked spiritually. The them that are hungry and, and we are mandated to feed. The them that need hope in the midst of hopelessness. The need, the them that shout but are depressed. The them that need deliverance. The them that need healing mentally, physically, and emotionally. And God is saying the only way that I can get you to focus back on them is I have to pull you in. I have to allow you to be captive. I have to 
allow you to be shut down for a moment so you can hear from me again. Is there anybody that's saying that I hear more from God in this season than I have in the last two, three, four, five years? God is speaking to me like never before. God is opening my mind again. God is opening my ears again. God is opening my heart again. God is opening my love again. All because he shut me down, shut me in, and caused me to look for him again. God says through this text, as I walk through this thing on this afternoon, God says through the text that we've gotten too comfortable and get comfortable in this thing because it ain't going nowhere soon. I know you don't want to hear this part of the message. Don't turn me out. Don't turn it off. Don't click to somebody else. But can I tell you that God sent, allowed this thing to happen so that he could get us back into a place where we seek after him fully. I know somebody is waiting and looking toward 2021. That's what we do when we get into hard situations in the middle of the year. What we do is, girl, I can't wait till this year is over. I can't wait to get into the new year. Next year is going to be my year. Next year I'm coming out and I'm going to be on top. Next year I'm going to make this thing work. Next year is going to be all blessings and no sorrow. Next year, next year, next year, next year. But can I tell you something? Uh, you got to deal with the remainder of the year before you get to the next year. Can I tell you that you still got four months to go before God begins to do anything. And if God is going to do anything in 2021 you better learn the lesson in 2020 so that you don't repeat what you got what you had to do in 2020 and that is where people are right now there are a lot of people I don't know where this came from God just dropped this on me there are a lot of people that's repeating 1998 and 2020 because you didn't learn the lesson in 1998 you didn't learn the lesson in 2019 2018 2017 and God says I want to bring you out I want to make things work for your good I I want to turn things around for your favor, but you didn't learn the lesson that I gave you in 2019. So I had to put you back in it in 2020 to hope and pray and, 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 and hopefully get you to see that I am your leader, that I am your head, that I am the one leading your life. This ain't your life. This ain't your body. This ain't your calling. This ain't you. This is all me. And you will do what I called you to do, whether you like it or you don't. There's a statement that we use to use uh, in my church in, in, in Greater Zion, uh, uh, Pastor Fisher would say that God can either use you or he can use you. The difference between the two is one is voluntary and the other is involuntary. And so I need to tell somebody on this afternoon, if you listen to me, uh, go ahead and let God use you voluntarily because if you let God use you voluntarily, then all the things that he has for you will come to you. But if God has to force you to be used by him, then everything that you expect him to do will be on pause, will be on hold. And I know that you're in a bad situation right now and God is saying I can turn the bad situation into a good situation, but I need you to know that I need you to do something for me. Before I turn this thing around in your favor, before it's working out for you, you can sing for Sean Mitchell all night long. It's turning around for me, but it ain't gonna turn around until you get back into the wheel of the Lord. Who am I talking to on this afternoon that knows that God needs you to get back where he called you to be. Need you to get back on the wall. Need you to get back into prayer. Need you to get back into fasting. Need to get you back into focus. I need somebody on this afternoon. Look at somebody and say, I need to get refocused again. And so in Jeremiah, God says, listen, because this ain't going nowhere soon, I need you to find the peace of the land. Watch the text, ladies and gentlemen. They are getting ready to be captive, being taken into captive, captivity. And God says, here's what I need you to do even in the captivity. I need you to build houses. I need you to not only build houses, but I need you to live in them. I need you to plant gardens so you'll have food to eat. I need you to eat the fruit from the trees that you plant. I need you to go ahead and get married.
drink. Go ahead. Everybody that's getting married, God bless you. God keep you. We're praying for you. I hope it is successful. In Jesus' name, Lord knows it's some work. But listen, go ahead and get married. Go ahead and have your children. To everybody that's having kids in this season, God bless you. God keep you. I'm praying for you. It's some work to raise kids in this season. God knows it. Lord, help. Uh, but, but listen, go ahead and do all of those wonderful things because you are not coming out of this thing as fast as you thought you were. He says, seek the peace of the city. Seek the peace of the city that I caused, that I caused you to be carried away in. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, because here's the tension in the text here. He says, find the peace of the land, but they were in Babylon. And anybody that knows anything contextually or biblically about Babylon, they never wanted to go to Babylon because it was, uh, 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 it was in enmity with God. They didn't like Babylon because Babylon had a whole bunch of stuff that God did not agree with. There was a whole bunch of whoremongering. There was a whole bunch of doing all kinds of stuff. In Babylon, and even in 2020 in America, uh, uh, I hate to hurt somebody's feelings, uh, but there are a lot of things that's going on in America and even across the world that God does not agree with. And so God is saying, in the midst of all of this, I need you to find some peace. Touch somebody. Say, find the peace of the land. Find the peace of the land. So God says, here it is. I hate to mess you up. He says, listen, for the prophets that are coming and telling you that you're coming out of this thing? He says they're lying. He says they are lying. Now listen, listen, Linda. Listen, Linda. Can I talk to somebody out there that's watching me and saying, well, what makes you different, Reverend? Uh, are you just starting this thing? What makes you different? Who, you, who do you think you are? Listen, trust me and believe that nobody feels uh, more unworthy to preach or to prophesy than I do, okay? All right, so please don't think that I'm coming to uh, give you a prophetic word and, you know, all this stuff. That's not me. That is not me. That is not me. That is not me. Now, if the Lord give me a word, a prophetic word, then I will give it, but I don't call myself prophet. That ain't what I do. That ain't what I operate in. Now, he may have grace on me for a moment, but if the grace lets off, okay? So please understand that I ain't, I'm not, I'm not the chief prophet. That is not me. You all have bishops and pastors and all those things uh, that, that's being to your life. So please, I'm not taking over nobody's position. But here's what the Lord is saying in Jeremiah. He said to every person that's giving you this word that you're getting ready to come out of this thing, please don't believe them. Don't you be deceived. Okay? This coronavirus, okay? Listen, I pray that God keeps us safe and protected from it, but it ain't going nowhere soon. Okay? It ain't going nowhere soon. It ain't about to go nowhere soon. So I hope that you've got enough masks in your house. I hope that you got enough Lysol and bleach. I hope that you are being wise when you go out. Okay? If you're going to the beach right now, okay, you are not wise in Jesus' name. I'm not calling you stupid, but I'm saying that you are not wise. Okay? We know that coronavirus is spreading by large groups. So why would you take yourself to the beach where you know a lot of people is out there and ain't nobody wearing no mask? You ain't smart in Jesus' name. All right? You're not smart in Jesus' name. I said it. You don't like it. It's okay. Pray for me later. But you are not smart going to all of these gatherings and people that's coming to Las Vegas. All right? You are not smart. Stay your butt in your house with the Lord and make sure that you are doing well in Jesus' name. All right? That's my rant. I'm off of it. But he says, don't believe him because you're not coming out of this thing so quickly. Here's what he says. Here's what he says. And here's the good news of the text as I get ready to close this thing out for you on this afternoon. Hopefully I'm not boring you. He says, the good news is that even though you're in captivity, I won't leave you without a word of encouragement. I know, I know, I know, I understand. I'm in captivity. You don't understand. I've lost my job. There's nothing going on in my life. Everything is in shambles. And God says, even in the midst of this bad situation, there is encouragement let me give it to you. He says in verse 11, he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Here it is. Here's where we get stuck. He says to give you or bring you in some versions to an expected end. Here's what God says. He says, even in the midst of this captivity, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm trying to bring you where I always wanted 
you to be. I need to talk to somebody that's saying in the midst of this pandemic that you just don't understand what's going on in my life. I need to tell you that even in the midst of your job loss, God has always been trying to get you to depend on him. But he couldn't get you to depend on him because you were too busy putting in extra hours. You were too busy trying to do overtime. You were too busy trying to make the boss happy instead of making the boss happy. And God says the only way that I can bring you into a place where you trust me and you believe in me is I have to take everything from you and still provide for you. I have to pour everything from you and still take care of bills. I still have to take everything from you and still make sure that your children eat. I have to take everything from you and still make sure that the lights are on. God says even in the midst of this, even in the midst of this bad situation, let me encourage you that there is an expected end that you've got to get to. And God says even in the midst of this, uh, knowing my thoughts, I've already calculated what the outcome is. See, you've got to understand that, that God is omniscient. He is fully operating in his omniscience in this moment. And, and, and the definition of omniscience is that God knows everything. He knows the end before you even get to it. He already began it and then he will end it. And so God says, I'm operating in my omniscience. I know that you're in captivity right now, but I know the ending of this story. I need somebody to encourage your neighbor and say, God knows the ending of my story. God knows exactly where I am in this moment. God knows exactly what I need in this hour. God knows exactly what to do for me. And I need you to know that God is bringing you to an expected end. Now, the expected end may not be what you want it to be, but it is an expected end. Somebody say God is doing it. God is doing it. Here it is. When this thing is over, here's where I need to encourage you on this afternoon as I'm moseying on through this text. He says, uh, by the end of this thing, I need you to be able to pray like you've never prayed before. Verse 12 says that you shall call upon me and, I, and, and you shall go and pray unto me. And here it is. This is encouraging. And I will hear from you. You shall seek me and you shall find me. That's good news on this afternoon for those that think that God has left you alone. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be doing this. This ain't what I like to do in this moment. I know people don't like hooping, so I'm trying my best not to go there. But he says in this moment, you need to understand that there is encouragement through the text. He says that even in the midst of your captivity, that I have already had an expected end for you in mind. He says that when you come out of this thing, that you shall call on me like you used to call on me, that you shall pray to me like you used to pray to me, and I will hear you again. Can I encourage somebody on this afternoon as I rush to my seat that I need God to hear me again. I need God to speak to me like he used to speak to me before, before I got full of myself, before I got beside of myself, before I got myself in this situation, when I didn't ask God to lead me, I need God to speak to me again. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need God to speak to me one more time. When this thing is over, you will pray and I will hear you. According to Psalm 71 and 1, when this thing is over, you will seek me as Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says like you should have been doing in the first place he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you am I talking to anybody on this afternoon that says God can make this bad situation a good situation you will seek me with all of your heart Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says for us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. I need to tell somebody on this afternoon while you're making the best of a bad situation to lean on God in this season. For God knows exactly what he is doing in this moment. Am I talking to anybody that knows that God can do anything but fail? But here he is until I get another job. I'm going to make these $2 work until I get 
better. I'm going to use my body to give him thanks until I get another home. I'm going to keep this apartment clean until I get another scholarship. I'm going to take these online classes until I get married again. I'm going to love this man or this woman that I got. Until another car comes, I'm going to appreciate uh, this bus pass. Uh, but until then, I'm going to make it work. Uh, am I talking to anybody on this afternoon that says uh, I can make this thing work? Uh, I can make two, peanut, uh, two slices of bread, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, I can make two slices of bread, a bologna sandwich. Uh, I can make sugar sandwiches. Uh, I can make butter bread. Uh, but whatever it is, I'm going to make this thing work. Uh, I know this situation looks bad. I know the situation looks like you're not coming out of it, but God says there is there's an expected end on the back end of this thing. If you just follow according to my statutes and my decrees, God says that even in the midst of the bad situation, I am still God, that I am still above, that I am still making sure that you're taken care of. Touch somebody, yell at them, give them an air high five if you want to, but say we're going to make this thing work. Even in the midst of a bad situation, I'm going to make this thing work. And here it is. As I close on this afternoon, Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, can I encourage you on this afternoon, he says that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody out there that loves the Lord on this afternoon? Is there anybody out there that is called according to his purpose? If you love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose I dare you to lift one hand up and say thank you for loving me I love you back come on tell somebody I love the Lord the song says I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he pitied every groan and so I know that God is working this thing out even in the midst of this situation God has called me to do his will and as I close on this afternoon I'm here to tell you that you can make the best of a bad situation I recall a bad situation as I close on this afternoon. Good God from Zion, I'm done. But there was a bad situation where we were so messed up. We were so tied up and tangled up that we had no way to get back to God. And so a man was sent through 42 generations of bad situations. He was born into a bad situation. He lived among bad situations. Anybody know who I'm talking about on this afternoon? He took on a bad situation. But here it is for the joy. God help me on this afternoon. But for the joy that was set before him. He took up my bad situation. And nailed it to the cross. Took my bad situations. And turned it into a good situation. A good situation of hope. A good situation of love. A good situation of coming out. A good situation of coming up. A good situation of coming through. God says on this afternoon. That he's making the bad situation. Turn out for your good. And here is how I know that the bad situation can be made good. It's because even in the midst of the bad situation called Calvary, the good situation was that on the third day Jesus got up and he got up with the good situation in his hand. Took the bad situation, demolished it, put it under his feet, and turned it into a good situation. I need to talk to somebody that's sitting out there on this afternoon Say you don't understand. I'm in a bad situation. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no car. I ain't got no no house. But I need you to know that even in the midst of a bad situation, that God is still able to do anything but fail. I'm talking to somebody right now that is saying that I only got two dollars in my pocket. I've only got twenty cents on my name. But God can take your two dollars and twenty cents, and He can make you look like a millionaire. Go ahead and shop at Target. Go ahead and shop at Ross. Go ahead and shop at, at Walmart. Whatever you've got to do, but make the bad situation a good situation. Tell somebody, yell at them one more time. Give them an air high five for the last time and say make the best of it. Can I talk to somebody on this afternoon? You need to make the best of this situation because God is getting ready to turn this thing around. You may not come out the way you want.
want to. This COVID thing may not end the way that we want it to. I know a lot of lives have been lost. I know a lot of people have died. I know a lot of people have transitioned. I know a lot of jobs have been lost. But God says that even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of Corona, even in the midst of COVID, that he's still taking care of you. That he's still making ways out of no way. That he's still providing for you. Make the situation a bad, even though it's a bad situation, it's a good situation for God to work it out. I can tell you this as I close and take my seat, that it is no way for God to show his strength, but for you to see God have nothing else to do but make this thing good. And so, as I let you go on this afternoon, I need you to know that you can make the best of a bad situation. If Jeremiah can make the best of a bad situation, so can you. If Hezekiah can make the best of a bad situation, then so can you. If Jonah can make the best of a bad situation, then so can you. If Paul can make the best of a bad situation, imprisonment and being stoned and being talked about and ridiculed and left for dead, then so can you. If Martin Luther King can make the best of a bad situation, then so can you. If grandmama can make the best of a bad situation, then so can you. If my mama can make the best of a bad situation, then so can I. I need you to tell somebody that you can make the best of a bad situation. I'm done. I'm closing. I'm out of here. I'm letting you go. But the bad situation may look bad on the outside, but on the inside, God has already worked it out. God has already made it happen. God has already turned it around for my good. God has already made me the head and not the tail. I got to go on this afternoon, but I need to tell somebody that the bad situation that you're in will not destroy you. The bad situation that you're in will not kill you. The bad situation that you are in won't cause you to hate somebody. The bad situation that you're in will still cause you to love somebody. The bad situation that you're in will still He'll bring you out on top. The bad situation that you're in will turn out for your good. Anybody know that it will? God will turn this thing around like nobody's business. Can I talk to somebody on this afternoon that knows that a bad situation will work out for my good? It's turning around for me whenever God says for it to. But in the meantime, I'm going to love him. In the meantime, I'm going to praise him. In the meantime, yes, God, I'm going to give him glory. In the meantime, I'm going to lift my hands and tell him thank you. I'm going to lift my hands and tell him he's worthy. I'm going to lift my hands. I feel my help on this afternoon. I'm going to lift my hands and say you're good. Even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of my job loss, I can still say that he's good no matter what. I can still say that he's good. He's greatly to be praised. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth, even in the midst of the bad situation. The devil won't take my praise, even in the midst of the bad situation. I still will give God glory, even in the midst of the bad situation. I will lift my hands and tell him that he's good. The devil thought he had my praise. The devil thought he had my worship. But I came somebody that God will make a way out of knowing anybody know that God will anybody know that God will anybody see him do it before if he did it once he'll do it again if he brought me out of the situation before he'll bring me out of this situation again I will make the best of this bad situation somebody said God will make the same turn around sooner or later God will get the glory and whenever he decides that he's ready to close this thing out right on King Jesus right on Emmanuel ah the soul says behold he comes yes God riding on a cloud the trumpet shall sound and God shall send Jesus yes to crack the sky and one day we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. I ain't got to worry about a pandemic. I ain't got to worry about Corona. I ain't got to worry about 45. I ain't got to worry about politics. I ain't got to worry about bills. Because soon and very soon he shall come and get me. Anybody know that he will? Look at 
somebody and say to make the best. Somebody look at your neighbor. Touch him, tap him. Air high five him, I don't care. Touch him and tell him make the best of a bad situation. Make the best of a bad situation. Yeah, make the best of a bad situation. The situation may not look good, but your God has already worked it out. He's already worked it out. I know we, we seem like we're in captivity right now. I know it seems like everything is just terrible in shambles. But can I tell you that God already knows the end of the story. He's already written out what's going to happen. And listen, whatever happens is according to the will of the Lord. Whatever happens in your life, it is the will of the Lord. My brother, my sister, whoever you are, whatever you're going through right now, the Lord already knew you were going to go through it. He already knew what was going to happen. And so all he needs you to do is make the best of this bad situation. I pray that on this afternoon that you understand that Jeremiah says that even in the midst of captivity, you can find the peace of the land. Even in the midst of all of this, you can find peace in the land. Here's how I know I can find peace in the land. Because as long as God is with me in the season, I'm at peace. As long as God is walking with me in this season, I know that I have peace. As long as I know that God has me on his mind, I'm at peace. And so, what I need to tell somebody on this afternoon is allow God to work through this thing. Allow him to make this thing happen. Because even in the midst of all of this, he is still making ways out of no way. He is still making sure that you eat. He is still making sure that your kids are taken care of. He is still making sure of the fact that while everything may be upside down, that you are still good. So somebody needs to know that God is working it out. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like it. It may not uh, sound like it. But God is working this thing out. So can I encourage you and let you know that this thing will work out as God sees fit. As God sees fit. And be open to it. And be open to it. 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 Whatever he's doing, whatever he's doing, be open to it. Let him work this thing out. Let him work it out. Let him work it out. I I, 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 I want to be done. I'm over my time. I got to let you all go. But there's somebody right now. I, 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 I don't know why I feel this, but I feel tears welling up in somebody's eyes because you thought that the situation was going to kill you. You thought that the situation was too bad. You thought the situation was going to destroy you. But God says, I didn't send the situation to destroy you. I sent the situation to pull you back to me. I sent the situation for you to find me again. I sent the situation for you to get back to praying like you used to. I sent the situation for you to find out who I am again like you used to. Like you used to pray. Like you used to fast. Like you, like you used to seek me. And so may that encourage you on this afternoon that at the end of the day he knows exactly what he is doing. As we get ready to go on this afternoon there may be somebody that's watching through this right now and you may not know Jesus in this moment. I, I want to encourage you to get to know him. I want to encourage you to seek after him in this season. The Bible says it this way, seek him while he may be found. For there's coming a day where you will want to find him and you will not be able to. And so I need to tell somebody that in this season that you can find Jesus. Simple, simple as this. If you believe that Jesus came, he lived, he died, he rose on the third day, and one day he will come back and get us. If you believe that for yourself, then you are saved. 
If you make that decision on today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave your information uh, in, in the comment section right there. If you don't want to do that, please, by all means, uh, you can give us a call 702-527-8216. Let us know that you accepted Jesus on this afternoon. We just want to touch bases with you. Want to make sure that you know exactly what you did. If you'd like to become a member of this church or this ministry, please let us know by uh, reaching out to us via email, via phone. You can reach out to us and we would love to have you as a member of A Place to Heal Christian Ministries where we can continue to give you the word of God and practical application for your life. We're getting ready to go on this afternoon. Uh, as we get ready to go, a couple of things I want to put uh, before you. I am so excited to tell you that we have launched our website uh, in Jesus name and we have launched our website. You can go on in and check it out, www dot a p h c m c dot com again www dot a p h c m c dot com go on there check it out let us know what you think in Jesus name all right as we get ready to go from this place if you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry if you were blessed by the word of God on today making the best of a bad situation make it work make it work you can give uh, through several different ways uh, dollar sign uh, through cash app dollar sign A P H C M C. Uh, you can find us on Tidely, all right, at a place to heal uh, ministries, or you can send a check if you like. Um, send it to a place to heal Christian ministries, all right. Put in the notes, tides, offering, donation, whichever one, um, to one five four four Highfield, the one word Highfield Court, Las Vegas, Nevada eight nine zero three two. You can send your love gifts there, and we will make sure to let you know that we receive it in Jesus' name. All right, get ready to have some great things coming up really, really soon. We've already touched bases with the barbershop, so we get ready to cut some heads in Jesus' name. And then we've also touched bases with a or with a black-owned business, right? Uh, he is a black man entrepreneur, and we are getting ready to provide ice cream for the community. All right, so you'll hear more about that in our Facebook, Instagram, and on our website. We thank you so much for following along with us. Let's pray before we go. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the word that you sent on today. Thank you that it hopefully, prayerfully, it encouraged somebody. Lord, I pray that you got the glory out of it. Even in the midst of this captivity, we can find the peace of the land. For you know what you think of us. You know where you want to take us. May you be glorified in this moment, in this season, in the name of Jesus. Whoever got saved on today, whoever heard this encouraging word, may their life never be the same again. Now, Lord, go before us so that the week may be good and prosperous. And if it's not, walk with us through it. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. We say together, amen and amen. Now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May he make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May he lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee such peace. And so you shall put his name upon your children and the Lord declares that I will bless them. Go in the peace and the favor of the Lord. See you next week. If it be the Lord will, have a great week. The blessings of the Lord upon you. Peace. Just a delay. Huh? It's a delay. I was making sure that it's up there.